That's when sin entered the world. Two deaths. Adam and Eve died, or uh, experienced during that time. One was a physical death. So the man was born in sin. Conceived in sin after that. And we were, all have an appointment with death. But they also died a spiritual death. A separation from the Lord. Adam at one time walked in the garden in the cool of day, fellowshipping the Lord. The next day he was found hiding in the presence of God. Some of the men that I've been able to talk to here in the oil field had no idea that they needed the Lord. They had no idea of creation. Jesus Christ had to come back to this world to redeem back to mankind what Satan had stolen from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When Adam and Eve transgressed, they became dualistic. Now, mankind was created triune. I don't know if you all know that. Spirit, soul, and body. Created in the image and likeness of God. And then a lot of the churches in my past, and I'm not sure about yours, have always taught that the soul and the spirit of man is synonymous. They're not. They're individual. Spirit, soul, and body. Created in the image and likeness of him. But with that transgression, but with that sin in the garden, they lost their spiritual connection with the Lord. Jesus Christ had to come back to redeem back to mankind the spiritual walk. We were all born into sin. Our spirit man was dead in trespasses and sin. So we lived a dualistic lifestyle until then. I was 21 years of age before I gave my heart to the Lord. My soul made the choices for my life. But my spirit, it was dead. I had no relationship with the Lord. I had no understanding of Christ. So I lived by my soulless attributes. Like a lot of unregenerate people. I lived, moved, operated out of my soul until one day my spirit man became quickened and made alive in Christ Jesus. No longer dead in trespasses and sin. I don't know if you're all aware of this, but your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And it was never given right to live independent of the spirit. Man, your spirit is to be in connection with the Holy Spirit. But when the fall of man came, he became dualistic in nature. And so Christ became your Lord. Except a man be born again, he cannot see these things. He must be born again in order to inherit eternal life. The Lord told Nicodemus. Nicodemus says, how can a man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? How is that possible? Once again, he was thinking naturally. He wasn't thinking spiritually. You can't go back into your mother's womb and be born again. The Lord was speaking of our spirit man. Except the man be born again in his spirit, he cannot see kingdom truths or kingdom principles. Who was that little girl that came up here and sang that song this morning? Lila. What was her name? Lila. Lila. She did a great job, job, didn't she? Was she as nervous as I am? For God so loved the world that he gave, and he's still giving to you and I today. No greater love has a man for us than our Father. To keep giving 
get to life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you think the Word of God is just a book of myths and uh, a crutch for people to lean on, you have no idea what you're missing out on. You can't just be a good person and enter into the kingdom. You have to have a real hard relationship with your Lord Jesus Christ and Him only. Ephesians 2, 8-9 says, We have been saved by grace. It is a free gift of God. How many of you guys like gifts this time of year? Have you ever been to a birthday party before in your life where the one who is <coughs> birthday is being celebrated is not the one that's getting the gifts? But the ones who are invited to it are getting the gifts? It's kind of backwards, isn't it? But it is more blessed to give than it is to receive, isn't it? May you all think about that this time of year. That we're not just out there celebrating the gifts, but the giver of the gift of life. The one who came to give us life more abundantly. Jesus Christ is the life of this world. He says, as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you have life. This is our nutrition. Every day, live, move, and breathe the Word of God. It will sustain you in this world. It says, in this world, you will have tribulation. You'll have distress. You'll have all kinds of things. But in Christ, you'll have life. Life more abundant. ears this morning to hear. Let him be listening. Let him both perceive and comprehend. For what major your thought and study you guys give to any truth in God's word, any truth that you hear, will be the major virtue and knowledge that will come back to you. Study to show thyself approved, the word says. A workman need not be ashamed. Be able to rightly divide the word of truth. But unless you're in your father's word, you'll have no idea of what truth is there. For he who knows the truth, the truth does what? The truth is free. free. Oh, set them free. How many of you would like to know the truth today? The truth being Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Having a relationship with a risen king is very important. Jesus Christ came back to this world to redeem back to you what Satan has stolen. And that's eternal life. This body still may die. And it is. I mean, we all have that point with death. But we're going to put on an incorruptible body one day. But our spirit man will live for eternity. You have two choices. The same choice that was given to Adam and Eve it's still the choice we have today. There's two trees out there being offered. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Today, you have a choice. You must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. Choose you this day in whom you will serve. Life or death. Which tree will you choose from today? The tree that bears fruit of righteousness or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The one that ultimately 
will destroy your life. The same two trees that Adam and Eve faced. Our choice. I know I had four hours this morning. <laughs> I just want to give you a little, uh, a, a little prelude to what I'd like to share next week, which is really where my heart is. I, I did have an invitation to speak next week, and if I invite it back, I will. Next week, I would like to share with you guys this. A distinguishing mark. We talked a little bit about this morning, Paul. That distinguishing mark as a born again believer. What is it that you have that the world doesn't have? I heard a man once say that we need to testify daily. And if necessary, use words. Our lifestyle must be a testimony of Jesus Christ in our walk, in everything that we do and say in life must leave a distinguishing mark. What is it that you have to offer the world that they don't already have? Except the man be born again. He cannot see these principles, these truths. You must be born again to inherit eternal life. And it's not going back into your mother's womb. Father, I just look to you, Lord. I make an invitation this morning to anyone that would like to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. You must be born again in order to inherit eternal life. If this is a day that you have been pondering in your heart about receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm sure that there's many here today that would be able to help you out. Bring you into the knowledge of the truth. I don't know if you guys have all the calls or not here in the AG Church. But it's not necessary to come forth. When I had the invitation by the Lord to come to him, I did it in my room. Got on my knees, asked the Lord to be my Lord and Savior. Life-changing experience for a couple. It is good to know the Lord. If there's any of you here today that want to uh, know a little bit more about salvation, which is a free gift, it says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word, that free gift, which is able to save your souls. Have any of you ever wondered why you still find yourself sinning this side of the cross as you did the other? after becoming born again? Well, I did. I struggled with it. I realized that uh, with being a triune being, my spirit was saved instantly when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But my soul had to be saved progressively by the washing of the water by the word. Your soul was never given the right to live independent of your spirit. I don't believe I told you that already. But when you take this word and you allow your 